Thank you, Melanie. I'd also like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today, the Ngunnawal people. I acknowledge the continuing culture and cherish the contribution they make to the life of our city and our region. I'd just like to say it's very important to acknowledge country because it's firstly about truth-telling when so many lies have been told in the past. Secondly, it's about respect for the traditional owners and in the case of welcomes to country, it's respect from the traditional owners. And thirdly, and this is a theme which I shall return to later in my speech, it's about what we can learn from that Indigenous knowledge of how to live in this land of rivers, mountains and plains. You have a distinguished uh, group of uh, VIPs seeing you today. Uh, Mr Andrew Lanning, who's already uh, given an address. And uh, we do agree on one thing that more needs to be done. I think you'll hear as I speak further that our uh, philosophy and our means differ. Uh, Mr Stephen Jones, I understand, is coming to see you. Uh, Senator Di Natale, um, already with us. Dr John Falzone, CEO of St Vincent de Paul and Ms Leanne Wells, CP, ACT Medicare Local, and I understand Julie may or may not be here depending upon her health. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. In the language of my Gamilaroi ancestors, Yama Malia. Hello, friends. I thank you for this opportunity to speak at your second meeting of the National Complex Needs Alliance. The ACT government is committed to making a difference to the lives of Canberrans. That is our philosophy as a Labor government, that the purpose of government is to build better lives and better opportunities. We ask people using our systems and delivering our services what is working well and what needs to change. And there were the common comments that you probably have heard as well. Support needs don't change when I cross the border so why do the supports? I had to tell my story over and over again. I had to call every day. The strongest theme to emerge in our service user focus groups was the desire to receive good customer service with a personal touch. Comments included, they call you out of the blue to see how you are going. You are not a number. And they believed and advocated me. They were my, my ally not my adversary. This was taken to a higher level with government and community leaders rethinking how people access the support they need. Our human services blueprint is the result of that work. It's a whole of system reform agenda to better utilise government investments in social outcomes, enabling community, health, education and justice systems to work in alliance, to join up, support to people and families. The blueprint is aimed at transforming the way human services are delivered across Canberra and to best reuse the resources we invest in our local communities. We know we live in one of the most innovative and resilient communities in the country. But disadvantage exists. The data from the socio-economic indices for individuals indicates over 40,000 ACT residents are experiencing high levels of disadvantage. It's a challenging time, with recent Commonwealth budget cuts leaving a $247 million hole in our health budget. Each of us uses human services throughout our lives. Schools, hospitals, community events and the justice system. We may need these services all the time, just some of the time and for a different period of time. For some of, us, some of us, that interaction is planned. For others, it's an emergency, an event that might cause us to interact with the human service systems in unexpected ways. Sometimes we just want information, while at other times we need more intensive support from multiple services. The blueprint aims to make sure Canberrans can easily access the appropriate support they need when they need it, the right human service at the right time for the right duration. It's the result of many people from the ACT government, the community sector and the Commonwealth agencies working together. They were guided by this comprehensive consultation strategy that told us what people really think of their human services system, 
what currently works and what could be improved. A new, better services task force will oversee the reform and report to the government through the Director General of the Community Services Directorate, the ACT Public Service Strategic Board and the Minister for Community Services. This truly is a whole of government effort. The blueprint is a key part of the government's priority to invest in Canberrans to deliver better human services and improve people's livability and opportunity. Under the banner of better services, three flagship initiatives will support a more integrated, person-centred and cost-effective human services system. And they are a local service network launch, a single human services gateway, and an expansion of the very successful Strengthening Families program. I note in the inaugural minutes, in the inaugural minute, meeting minutes of the Alliance, the reasons why attendees were interested in that Alliance. They included families have complex needs and the need and need integrated pathways. Complexity is in the services, not just in their needs and in the people. And we need to overcome that complexity so that we can properly meet those needs. Vulnerable people are often shuffled from pillar to post to seek different help from different agencies. And there is a need for a cross-portfolio and cross-jurisdictional advocacy for connected service delivery. Working as a dentist myself for 30 years, in public, private and Aboriginal medical service practices, I've felt and seen the failure, the failure to meet those complex needs of those in our community who are most in need. And I've seen the family suffer <coughs> that has continued. It is these kind of ideas that are shaping the reform of the human service system in the ACT. The first initiative is the launch of a local service network, rolling out key elements of the blueprint through a place-based approach. It's a nation-leading trial of a nation-leading policy reform. The government will invest $1.3 million over the next two years for the trial in West Belconnen. It will roll out new ways to better integrate local services, including local governments, flexible funding arrangements, enhanced service to the coordination and data sharing. It will provide the government and community with a rich evidence base to better understand which services really do make a difference in improving people's lives. There are many good reasons why Best West Belconnen is an ideal place for the launch of the local service network. And it's also in my electorate of Ginandera. West Belconnen has areas of disadvantage but it also has strong community spirit and a track record of government community members and community and private sector organisations working together for the benefit of the wider community. For example, during last, week's, last year's Anti-Poverty Week, over 120 people gathered at Kipax Uniting Community Centre to discuss ways to make our community stronger. Service users, community organisations, we local MLAs, businesses, members of the community, government providers and government staff all attended. Gathering generated nearly 100 different ideas about how to build community through shared action, social activities, increased participation and planning and designing spaces. West Belcon also has a diverse population, both culturally and in its mix of ages. It's a growing community with new development planned where community engagement will be a priority. It is a resilient and resourceful population. Two examples of this are the West Belconnen Health Cooperative, which grew out of community concerns, and the Charney Carney, the locally organised annual celebration of the people and area of West Belconnen. Organisations in West Belconnen have long been committed to the principle of collaboration in service delivery. For example, the West Belconnen Child and Family Centre was based on the idea, single, the idea of a single child and family precinct with three services in the area, West Belconnen Child and Family Centre, Uniting Care Kipax and Belconnen Community Service, rather than three separate organisations. The second flagship initiative is the investment of $322,000 to establish a single human services gateway. The gateway will bring together a range of community and com 
government services into an accessible service hub with a common assessment and referral system. Three existing gateways, the Disability Information Service Hub, the Children, Youth and Family Services Gateway and the Housing Central Access Point will be merged to form a single efficient point of access. It is a, is a recognition that people often have multiple needs and need to access more than one service simultaneously. The third initiative is an expansion of the very successful Strengthening Families project. <coughs> we will be investing an additional $445,000 to work with up to 50 families with complex needs. Ten high-risk families participated in the Strengthening Families pilot last year, with over 30 family members comprising 13 adults, two adult children and 21 infants, children and young people, including two pre-birth. The participants were drawn from marginalised groups who had experienced constant difficulties in navigating and accessing the service system. Participants experienced multiple needs and are navigating many forms of exclusion. The most significant are domestic violence, mental health, unstable housing, past homelessness, family breakdown, indebtedness and legal and transport problems. All these families are in receipt of income support in various forms. An independent evaluation of the Strengthening Families Project by the ANZOG Institute of Governance found it in keeping with international best practice in supporting vulnerable families with multiple needs. It is a place-based program, personalised through a family-chosen lead worker model. It provides strategic choices for participants as they co-design the service offered with their lead worker. It is delivered through a collaborative system of governments which present, represents a community of practice for supporting families at risk in the ACT. It seeks to build more detailed and sensitive family information profiles which can be shared by families, lead workers and appropriate agencies system-wide to improve the quality of information and reduce the administrative burden. The Strengthening Family System includes best practice, best practice program initiatives such as this lead worker model, family information profiles, co-design and learning project tools and a system of project governments. The outcomes of the pilot project were very impressive. For participants, the pilot delivered high quality service delivery. They found the journey mapping process emotionally difficult at times but highly rewarding and also achieved very positive outcomes with regard to navigating critical journey barriers. <coughs> For the project partners, it delivered genuine collaborative governance and an endorsement that a community of practice approach be pursued system-wide. The successful strengthening families approach will now be expanded for up to 50 vulnerable families, building to up to 200 families over time. Each family will be supported by a lead worker who will work holistically with the family, a single family plan which utilises natural support networks and a tailored support package. The work will require identifying and engaging families from, with multiple and complex needs and embedding methods for identifying, authorising and training lead workers from across the service system. A coordinated approach to difficult problems is the only way to success. Here in the ACT, our trial of through care for recently released prisoners has had a remarkable impact on reoffending. I am proud, as the then Corrections Minister, to have been involved in its inception and now to support further funding for that project in this year's budget. Achieving a cohesive human services system will take time. We've learnt from other jurisdictions' experiences with joined up government approaches and built a supporting structure, developed a family focus instead of a program focus and decentralised decision making to our lead workers at the front line. Continued collaboration and co-design is vital to realising the vision of the blueprint as it is rolled out into the community. Future engagement 
will value contributions from all stakeholders and to listen, learn and adapt to the needs of the people and the communities. Leveraging off the rich network relationships within government and across those communities. Evaluation embedding the blueprint across the ACT is a key phase of that rollout. Reflecting back to the start of this speech and the purpose of acknowledgement of country, you'll remember what I said about the future, what we can learn from Indigenous knowledge of how to live. It is in Aboriginal medical services that we can already see a collaborative, joined up approach with holistic services, not just providing health care, but also focusing on the social determinants of health. These ACT Better Services initiatives are nation leading policy and system reform. I'm confident, given the high level of co design from stakeholders, the great results from the Strengthening Families pilot, and the goodwill and commitment that exists in the government and community sectors that it is a reform that is not only exciting and transforming, but achievable. Thank you.